Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terra Mantis, and in this video we're going to cover 10 things that you may or may not know about Resident Evil 7. We'll go over topics that are based in lore, game mechanics, easter eggs, and things that are just simply fun to know. But all these Resident Evil topics are either obscure or widely unknown. Also, don't forget to play the game where if you learn something new you hit the like button. But if you already knew everything, don't feel bad for one second to also hit the like button because I have to appease the YouTube gods, and the only way I can do that is in the form of blood sacrifice by way of pressing the like button. So so just just hit the like button just do it all right let's get started the first topic is a simple one but it might actually be the most vital on the list so we all know Ethan the guy from the start of the game who's getting out of his car and thinking to himself well gee golly I sure do love my left hand look at how useful it is I sure do hope my wife I haven't seen for years doesn't go ahead and just randomly chop it off Then when it is chopped off, whenever Ethan is hurt, for whatever scientific reason I can't understand, pouring first aid meds on his arm heals him. And oh boy, does he sure love looking at his hand while he's healing. And we all know that feeling when you're in combat and you need to heal. That extremely calm response of, Oh my god, stop looking at your goddamn hand and get the gun back out, you stupid dick. Well, what you may not know is that you can actually cut this annoyingly long animation short. That's right, if you tap the block animation in the middle of the heel, Ethan will block for a second and cancel the other 50 minutes of his animation where he stares at his beloved hand in the middle of something trying to kill him. Alright, moving along. Before Resident Evil and Monster Hunter, Capcom's flagship franchise was Street Fighter. Or... Or was it actually Mega Man? I don't know. Regardless, as a callback to the arcade classic, in Resident Evil 7 you can find a book called Fighting Streets. Obviously a Capcom reference to Street Fighter. But the Street Fighter series isn't the only old callback to Capcom's gaming past. As a matter of fact, the entire tape section of the game revolving around the Sewer Gators, the internet reality show covering all things spooky, is actually a reference to Sweet Home, the 1989 Nintendo game by Capcom. Much like the Sewer Gators, Sweet Home revolves around a documentary film crew who is investigating a haunted mansion. Also, Sweet Home was directed by Fujiwara, the same man who would go on to become the general producer on the first Resident Evil game. He conceived Resident Evil as an inspirational successor to Sweet Home. So in the end, this is a very nice homage to the roots of Resident Evil. Alright, for the next one, as I'm sure you know, after encountering Lucas, you'll sometimes run into crates that now explode. Well, what you may not know is that similar to this, in the Ethan Must Die expansion for the first DLC, are similar boxes all over the place. But unlike the core game, if you crouch down low and get real close, you can actually hear ticking coming from inside the boxes that are armed to explode. The next one is a small nod to a fast food chain of all things. Yes, Resident Evil 7 takes place in Louisiana, but both Ethan and Mia originate from Texas. Now what you may not know is that Whataburger was founded in Texas. It would also eventually expand to Louisiana as well. But for the most part, this is a regional food of the United States. And if you look in the trash and randomly placed around the Baker residence, you'll see what appears to be a clear nod to Whataburger's iconic cup design. Now speaking of iconic design, also placed around the Baker residence are all kinds of knickknacks. But one thing that you may not have noticed is that one asset designer at Capcom is clearly a sneaker fan, as you can find a shoe that bears a striking resemblance to that of a very old and dirty pair of Jordan 4s. Alright, for the next one I'll show you a fairly well hidden puzzle. Now near Zoe's trailer, and after making your way through some thick weeds, you'll come across a projector with a sequence of numbers by it. Now to put this puzzle together, you'll first need the snake key. After obtaining the snake key, you can enter the kid's room, which is upstairs of the main house. In the attic there, you'll find the toy axe. If you bring this axe to the shadow puzzle near Zoe's trailer, you can use it to unlock the nearby chest. And this will give you a stabilizer injection. You see that? See what they did there? It's a seven, 
And it's Resident Evil 7. <laughs> Woo! Moving on to the next one. One cool little quick nod of Resident Evil's past is in the form of subtle little nuances. For one, you can find a book called The Unveiled Abyss, which was authored by Clive O'Brien. And this was a character from Resident Evil Revelations. Also, if you check this newspaper, you'll see that the article is written by Alyssa Ashcroft, a lesser-known reporter character from Resident Evil Outbreak. These aren't the only callbacks, though. One callback is much more interesting and much more subtle. And to find it, in the attic of the main Baker house, you can find a renovation contract from Trevor and Chamberlain Construction. This is, of course, referring to George Trevor, the man who constructed the Spencer Mansion from Resident Evil 1. Who builds this shit? Interestingly though, the Spencer Mansion was finished in 1967, and to keep the secrets of the mansion hidden, Oswald E. Spencer, the co-founder of the Umbrella Corporation, devised a plan and killed Trevor nearly 30 years before the renovations were made at the Baker residence by the company in 1992. So it seemed that it's possible that Umbrella Corp absorbed the construction company as some aspect of the cover-up to keep both Trevor's death and the Spencer Mansion a secret. Also, one more interesting aspect hinting towards this is the ox-eye window at the Baker House. When inspected closer, it's actually half of the Umbrella logo. The last one is definitely my favorite on the list. It's so peculiar and bizarre, but simple at the same time. And it has to do with the slight few differences with the Western version of the game when compared to the Japanese version of RE7 due to censorship. Besides that, though, there's been major adjustments to many of the gruesome encounters with the deputy. For instance, the deputy's head is not separated when Jack attacks him with the shovel. Also, almost all tension is removed from the scene in the Japanese version when Lucas tells Ethan to look in the fridge. I'm sorry, it's just hilarious to me. Instead of a severed, mutated head in the fridge, it's just a picture of the deputy with his face X'd out. Lucas, settle down. You're just... You're just too evil. It's too scary. And last but not least, upon reaching the corpse of the decapitated deputy, because of the changes, the scene is completely altered. Sorry, buddy. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.